This is a $25,000 VR headset, one of the most expensive virtual reality devices available on the market today. The special features of this headset don't lie in the optics, the processor or the tracking. This device can literally read your mind, your thoughts and actions available as raw data to utilize within the headset. And in this video, we will take a deep dive into why and how this is the future of your virtual reality and the precursor to full dive. The current way we interact with our virtual worlds more resembles how we react with reality. We move using our body, grab objects with our hands. Admittedly, there are alterations to say strength and speed, but for the most part, we are emulating what's possible within the real world. With eye tracking, you can enable some telekinetic abilities, but the technology I'm going to talk about could seriously revolutionize virtual reality. And companies from Meta to Valve understand this and are heavily pushing research and development in this field. The Gallia is a result of nearly a decade worth of research and development from the teams at OpenBCI and Varia. And what this headset does is use various combinations of sensors placed around the face and head to scan brain waves and fluctuations in real time. And while you might initially think this seems like another pointless addition to VR, its potential stems way further than you first imagined. For example, once companies like OpenBCI can interpret data coming from the brain, it can open a whole world full of possibilities. A person with amputated limbs could regain a fully functional virtual limb just by interpreting the signals. You could move, pick up objects, interact with the digital environment without moving a single muscle and just by thinking. Imagine having an inventory in a game. You could just think of the item and it appears. This is the future of our VR and AR devices. And just listen to this snippet from Valve CEO, Gabe Noon. So the question, as soon as you do that, you say, oh, can we give people a tentacle? And you think, oh, brains were never designed to have tentacles. But it turns out brains are really flexible. Your body's ability to incorporate new things into it has to be flexible, you know, because you use tools and you want to use the end of the tool as if it's part of your body. And you, in fact, if you look at the parts of people's brains that light up, it's exactly the same. Uh, you can make people think they hurt by injuring their tool, uh, which is a complicated topic in and of itself. Now that was just a small snippet of the interview, but what he talks about is mind blowing. He was talking briefly how the brain is malleable enough to allow for extra appendages so essentially, your avatar could take any form. But he goes even deeper than this. From literally programming how much sleep you want to how you want your focus or personality to be that day. The future of BCIs is an incredibly exciting vision. But the idea of opening up your brain to be programmable, editable and seen by third party companies could be a very dystopian future. And before I talk about the exciting potential, how this technology could turn into something like Full Dive, I first want to touch on the dark path we could be heading down. Now, every big tech company, to some degree, are working on brain-computer interfaces, some for the better of humanity, but some to benefit their own pockets. Right now, companies like Facebook make most of their money through targeted ads. Depending on what you interact with on the web, usually determines what ads are displayed through data collection. Now, this has its limitations. When I click on a page, Facebook or other data collection agencies don't know my intent or what I'm looking for or what I'm feeling. Our thoughts are private from the companies that seek to monetize this. But with BCIs, this unlocks the potential for companies to extract every single desire, thought, want and need from our actions, thoughts and behaviors. It could use a combination of sensors to truly understand what we are seeing. And this is something Facebook or other companies want to shove down our throats. At that moment, we have lost all personal privacy. But there is light at the end of this tunnel. People like Gabe Newell understand these concerns and want this not to be owned by one corporation. And that is a fundamental requirement. But that's enough for the negativity. BCI technology isn't just the holy grail for VR. It's the holy grail for humanity. The Gallia may be the first of many BCI VR headsets, but it's a small step in understanding what's possible. And after listening and watching the people at the top of this technology, it's clear that before long, we will be directly enhancing how we feel, sleep and interact with the world. Mental illness could become a thing of the past and our virtual games we play today could become more rewarding and immersive 
than reality itself. In many of these interviews, they talk about input into the brain, which would require some invasive surgery. As far as technology goes, you will not be entering the Matrix or SAO world without it. But input is possible. This is now clear, and research and development is exponentially increasing due to the realization of its potential. Today, we put the screens in front of our eyes, but tomorrow, we could be walking to the gates of Mordor, just within our dreams. And it's thanks to the teams at OpenBCI, this future is becoming our reality. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, I'll catch you on the next one.